very much, guys, and uh, thank you to all our speakers. It's been a, a wide range of expertise as before us here today. Um, mental health for young people. I mean, it's it's uh, we hear it the whole time in our schools uh, that children can't aren't you know aren't communicating the way they used to pre-COVID. That there is an impact. You know, you're hearing it from teachers, principals. Uh, parents a little bit as well and I know it's great because we've got a lot of our school activities back up and going you know and people come back out to clubs parents are given time and volunteers and, and areas all around so I'm in a rural area myself I'm from uh, I suppose I'm representing Roscommon Galway but from Banna so I'd know some of your groups in particular um, and as Senator O'Loughlin has said I mean the online supports are absolutely crucial and as you've mentioned yourself particularly in rural areas where uh, you, you, you know, there, you can't get, you know, you can't travel two or three hours to get to a city centre location, maybe to speak to somebody face to face. Being able to access online supports is, I think, has been a, a game changer in a lot of ways. And I'm very supportive of that. I very much welcome, Derek. I think you spoke about Together All. I know that that's been rolled out. I know sort of under the Department of Further and Higher Education, you know, that that was um, funding that was allocated to have access for students at third level. I suppose, and it, I know it's a UK programme, but it's evidence-based, and I think it's you're speaking with professionals. So I suppose when we had our universities and colleges with us here as well previously, I suppose my question was around how has that been promoted, I suppose, out in the universities and colleges? So I might ask you maybe just to comment on that. We have all these services, uh, but how are they been promoted at a local level or within colleges or within universities around access to, say, for example, Together for All? Um, Again, uh, very much I appreciate the counselling and primary care. I only really discovered that recently. I know it's through the GPs, but again, just maybe can you speak to uh, GPs that um, refer this? I know the Day Hospital in Banna Slow gave me a ton of leaflets on CIPC and explained about how this was an amazing service that's done through a GP and that when someone presents to a GP, so in rural areas, more than likely your GP is your first port of call if someone's going through an episode or if it's a loved one that wants to go in and talk to a GP about somebody in their family that's going through an episode and how they deal with it. So I just think that that's absolutely crucial, the, the, I suppose, the promotion of that service. People are aware when they go to the GP, they can be put in referral to the counselling and primary care. Um, great to hear that there are 73 CAMS teams. Again, just eating disorders, major one. Uh, Community Healthcare West, I know, have an eating disorders team. I don't know if there's anything else you want to mention on that, Derek, but that's just maybe two or three points. And again, thank you for your presentation. Uh, for, uh, sorry, Ms. Lisa Malloy from IACP, sorry, thank you so much. 5,000 members you represent. That's absolutely phenomenal. Um, I suppose we have one in four schools now with access to DESH, and I know an awful lot of those services, particularly around school completion, HSCL, like they've moved from uh, what would have been too slow, I think, back into the Department of Education. But I suppose, um, you know, I don't know if there's... You know, all our schools need access to supports, but in particular, I suppose our DESH schools, you know, might have particularly vulnerable cohorts. And, and, and that's one that I wouldn't mind a little bit of focus. So I don't know if you have any comments just on that from the IAC, IACP perspective. And also, I think you might have mentioned maybe SPHE, um, but just how much time has been allocated realistically in exam years to SPHE when maybe students are going through really pressurized times and, you know, if we're delivering these uh, supports, sort of counselling supports, and it's been done through SPHE, if that's correct. I'm not sure now if it was in your statement. Yeah. So apologies if not, if anyone else wants to comment, um, please do. Uh, Mary, again, thank you as well, just on the psychotherapy side. Um, again, I think you mentioned DESH schools, perhaps. I suppose you mentioned absences, sorry, um, absences in schools. I'd be very curious there because um, in those DESH schools, there's a homeschool community liaison. So I suppose I would be very much uh, looking to see what the HSCL coordinator in those schools is reporting when it comes to absences in schools. And I don't know if there's anything else that you might have on that one. And I'll get to the, the end very quickly. Uh, but uh, just to say thank you as well to Fiona from ISPCC. Great about the helplines. You do a phenomenal job and all your volunteers and everyone that works with you. Uh, smart moves, again, if you can comment on that, great to hear about it. Uh, transition, it's a really difficult period from primary to post-primary, also from <coughs> secondary into third level. Those transition pieces are crucial. But just if you can state a little bit more about smart moves, how many schools have participated? We have 4,000 schools out there. How many of them are doing the programme? How many of them have engaged? Or is it an online process? And great to hear that's for parents and guardians as well. Spun out, uh, Ian, well done. I know I knew one of the members of your team before. 50808, I sing that song and I have been over the last year and a half. I mention it whenever I can. I think it's an absolutely phenomenal text line service 24 seven and that anyone can access. And well done, well done to everyone who works with you in terms of the 4,000 calls per month. You've made a difference to a lot of people's lives in a really difficult time over the last two or three years, along with all of you in, in the 
each of the roles that you do. Uh, great to hear you on Instagram and TikTok, probably need to do that myself. Um, but just if you have any other comments on that, very welcome as well. And just on the silver cloud, uh, may I ask, was that maybe Maureen or Fiona, that maybe is it Fiona through the ISPCC, just the CBT, um, the rollout of that, I am such an advocate. I've seen more of this online. I know that for early intervention, it's crucial from my uh, from my back from what I can see. And then obviously that there's able to be accelerated in terms of being able to engage and then accelerating it to making sure that there's access in a timely way to one-to-one -to -one sports. But just we have to realise that there is a long waiting list. And if we can get to people early on with early intervention, I think it's crucial. And uh, Jigsaw, well done, just innovate together. Uh, sorry, Maureen, just on the fund, the schools, and one good friend. Just to fund the schools again, just how many schools are participating and just how is the engagement on that? So apologies for uh, too many questions, I hope, but I, hopefully it's a little bit for you just to promote some of the programs that you're doing and maybe just to hear, help us understand maybe at third level and at secondary and primary school level. Thanks very much, Derek. Thanks very much, Senator. Um, I'll, I'll try and be as, as, as quick as I can. Uh, just in relation to Together All, that was a, a HEA HSE joint initiative, so we provided match funding for, for that. Oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, okay, Marie. my apologies. So not just solely the departments. Uh, no, and I suppose the, the importance okay. of mentioning that is, is uh, just around that, that commitment to work with the education sector and, and to demonstrate that we, we, we can do that effectively. And, and I think our colleagues in the National Office for Suicide Prevention within the HSE have been doing that for a number of years now around the, the um, strategic framework around suicide prevention for for, uh, for students in, in higher education settings. Okay, uh, so, so there's a lot of, of kind of collaboration happening in that sector already. So, so we were delighted to, 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 to so join. So it just launched, hasn't it, from my understanding? Like, on do we on the 11th of October. Yeah, the 11th of October it launched. So I was speaking Story to Tra Tressa Fox, my, my colleague from, um, from, from the uh, PCHEI, the Professional uh, Psychological Counselors in Higher Education. I yes. think she was with the committee recently. That's right. Um, so we, we don't have stats yet, but, but, but they're on the way. Uh, and I know the service uh, has, as you mentioned, it, it, it started in the UK. Uh, and they do have a very good track record internationally. So, so we're looking forward to that as one part of the overall solution, uh, which will hopefully take pressure off, off the counsellors themselves and, and the counselling services and other services. So, so that's one that also does fit into our overall plans around digital mental health. So again, it slots in there within that layered care model of support. Thank you. Um, so so that's, that's one thing to, to mention, particularly relevant relevant to the work of the committee. Uh, Counselling and primary care uh, became uh, part of, of the remit of the National Counselling Service in, in 2013. Um, it's receiving around 19,000 referrals per annum, so it's around 365 referrals per week. Uh, there are capacity issues, there, there are waiting lists, uh, and there's variance across the country in relation to the Counselling and Primary Care Service. We're aware of that. Uh, it is an area that's a priority for us under sharing the vision, so recommendation 16 under sharing the vision or, or mental health policy speaks to, to talk therapies um, uh, and their availability in particular. So, so um, currently the service is only available to 18-year-olds uh, and over uh, and medical card holders. So it's, it's something that we, we need to, to further uh, enhance really and create, create capa increase capacity uh, yes. in relation to. It would be really crucial, I suppose, and just also the addiction support. So say, for example, in Banaslow, we have a day hospital, but our addiction supports are only if you have alcohol addiction with mental health issues, which I know we're here speaking about mental health, but also we have an awful lot of young people that have addiction as their primary. So if you're diagnosed and you're your addiction is primary as opposed to your mental health uh, concern. And obviously one leads the other or vice versa, um, you know, you don't get to access those supports. So I think the the pilots that we see in Galway, there's pilots been run out there, I think around addiction, pilot addiction programmes around alcohol would be great to see those been rolled out more in, in different yeah. towns. I Senator, think. I'm just aware because the, I'm aware yeah, of the time right. as well, but I know there's plenty of other speakers who want to come in, so I want to let the oh, yeah, witnesses let reply you. to the questions and then we'll... Thank you. So really briefly on the, on the last points then, uh, in relation to eating disorders, uh, the eating disorders model of care uh, was launched in, in 2018. The overall aim is, is for there to be 16 teams, uh, eight CAMS, eight adults. Uh, currently there's two CAMS teams, one in, in the Cork Kerry area and, and one in CHO7 uh, through the Lindara Community Eating Disorder Service. Uh, there was funding released for, for 20 additional whole time equivalents in 2021 to establish three new teams. One of those would be a CAMS-based team in, in, the, yeah, in the West, in CHO2. Yeah. Um, so so that's, that's in, in progress. Uh, and then I, I think that was more or less it, just in relation to Silver Cloud, and I know that it was directed at, at Fiona, just to say that the partnership between HC Mental Health and, and Silver Cloud uh, will be part of a launch event on the 30th of November, oh, uh, where we're, we're planning to, to ramp up service provision next year.
That's great. Hopefully we'll all get an invite. <laughs> thank best. you. Uh, Lisa, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Um, I think your interest is particularly in relation to the provision of counselling sports within DASH schools. Yeah, um, as just you if mentioned. you'd any comment on that. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I don't have any specific data in relation to DASH schools, but I do know anecdotally from speaking with quite a number of our members who work in DASH schools, the absolute importance and the fact that so many DASH schools are actually providing counselling based yeah. within the schools already. So the yeah. service is there because there is an obvious demand for the service to be there. What we need to do is we need to do this in a coordinated, comprehensive way that all schools can get equally get access to this essential service. Thank Completely. You. Thank you so much, Lisa. I appreciate that. Could I just comment Mary on the Desh Kevin. School, just if we're, we Steve, seem to be yeah. going around to the... Um, ju so I, I did mention the Desh Schools in my uh, opening <laughs> statement, <laughs> and I, I, I had been talking to a colleague of mine who yes. said in a Desh School in, in the west of the country, there had been over 90 unexplained absences yes. in a school of 500. And you're right, of course, there are hum uh, homeschool liaison people. There are also psychotherapists working in that school. Yeah. But I suppose my point was to the volume of 90... And well, I suppose massive. that's a lot for any homeschool liaison I, teacher to be w working. To manage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But maybe just that we could get reports, you know, there's just something that we could highlight yeah. maybe with the HSCLs when yeah. there is that thank type you. of volume. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Fiona. Uh, Senator Dolan, yeah, thank you for your kind comments and recognition of our helpline as well. Our volunteers and facilitators do fantastic work there. Um, SIPSI, uh, the first, or sorry, not SIPSI, SPHE, um, too much stuff going on. Um, so the time allocated for the junior cycle course is 100 hours over three years. So that's kind of averaging one hour per week. It isn't great. Um, uh, Smart Moves then. So Smart Moves then is a whole classroom based programme. Um, it's an evidence based programme which ISPC has the rights to be able to use in Ireland. Current uptake is 333 primary schools and 15 post primary schools. The plan for this year is to um, obviously target uh, much more um, post-primary schools to get a further uptake there. Uh, I suppose the USP of the programme is that it's based on strengthening emotional resilience and coping ability and giving children smart moves that they can develop as the, as the lesson proceeds. Um, it aligns with various different government policies, the HSE is stronger together under the growing and learning well. Um, uh, I suppose the evidence has shown that um, these particular types of programmes, that the outcomes are better when they're delivered within the classroom setting by the classroom teacher, whom the children have a relationship with. In terms of next steps, um, we're trying to translate the programme um, Oscalia, so that our um, colleagues in Grail Schools can access the programme. Uh, further development of parent and carer support materials and um, securing funding to upscale it as well. And I'm happy to send you on... Um, the, the outline of the programme as well, so that you'll have that. Uh, Silver Cloud, the, the digital health programme. So um, uh, it's delivered, um, yes, yeah, so children and young people can, act, or sorry, parents of anxious children and young people can access it. So the parents, it's an adult programme that supports par parents right. of anxious children or teens from five to 18. Um, and the parents um, do avail of the programme and I suppose they're developing schools and techniques um, to support their anxious child or young person. There's modules they can do themselves, there's modules that they can do together. Um, and then there's a separate programme then for children and young people 14 to 18 years of age again, where they can log on and um, they can do the programme at their own pace. Um, they can, um, they learn different things around, I suppose it's CBD or cognitive behavioural therapy yeah. based. Um, so different things around, um, I suppose, understanding, you know, thoughts, behaviours, the relationships between them. Um, the, in terms of the evaluation with it, um, there's two questionnaires um, conducted pre and post um, and sometimes in the interim so we have the strength and difficulties questionnaires the SDQs and then the general anxiety disorders so the GAD7 um, and they help to um, determine I suppose the starting point for the child or young person um, it can be looked at at the interim and then at the end as well it runs over about 8 to 12 weeks um, the child or young person they have the autonomy to and dip in and dip out of it and can the parents, can they just log on online? How do you register for it? Yes, or? you can register. Well, via the, we have um, a section on our on ispc.ie where um, children and young people can register directly for it and parents as well. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, Fiona. That's great to hear. Great to hear about that programme. And uh, sorry, if we have time, maybe just Maureen and Ian. Thank you. Um, yeah, just to say, uh, in terms of online, Jigsaw have an online service also, um, right. which has just been uh, launched recently. We have a whole new department and we do provide um, live web chat, which is super. We also have group chats once a week where various topics are discussed and an email service. So we have moved into that domain. And again, um, it is proving very, very useful. Um, you asked about the schools and the number of schools. Uh, together, well, we, yes. we have 147 schools engaged in One Good School currently. Um, those 147 schools are all in jigsaw service areas. We have 14 service areas, one in Roscommon, um, I'm glad to say, um, and Galway. Right, yeah. um, but we have 14 throughout the country and uh, it, oh, th this programme is only available in those areas. Um, the key, by the way, the services that we have in the 14 areas are all delivered therapeutic services also, and they are by a variety of clinicians from different disciplines currently. Okay. One of the things about the One Good School programme at the moment is we want to see it go national. It is so unfair that this programme is only available to schools within our service areas. In order for it to go national, we need funding for that because currently it is totally funded by fundraising. There's no, no state support coming to it at all. And if I just may finally end off on the point, we've heard about various social and emotional learning programmes that exist. Our um, One Good School programme can incorporate them and give a structure in which schools can use those because, because we know coming in and doing once-off um, events or doing programmes and then them being let fall away um, has less use, let's say. Whereas with the One Good School, we offer a very, very solid, defined structure. And these programmes, as well as our own programmes, very much can fit into it. Very good. Thank you. Thanks thank you very much. Thank you, Akwar Kahirlik. Thank you, uh, Senator Dolan, for, for your question. Um, in terms of debt, I just want to point out, and I think you made this point as well, that a high proportion of the children and young people who would meet the depri deprivation threshold actually go to schools that are not categorised yeah. as debt. So I think the point about making sure supports are available in all schools is is really well made. Um, in terms of the the five, uh, the, sorry, spun out, um, you know, I think it's really important that we're providing mental health literacy information to young people where they are in places like Instagram and TikTok, um, and actually advertising. On on those platforms is really expensive and we've been trying to get the platforms to, to help us out okay. uh, in terms of, of making that information available to their users in Ireland. Um, I'll pass on your thanks in terms of the 5808 volunteers. There's hundreds yeah. of people around the country That's every awesome. evening logging on on their, on their laptops, on their couches, um, supporting <laughs> other people, which is They're an amazing great. thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's an amazing uh, thing that they do. Yeah. We had a volunteer celebration here in Dublin last night and it was just wonderful to thank them in person for what oh, they right. do for their peers. Um, but just to say that we'll soon be launching that service on WhatsApp, um, so it'll be available to, to young people um, who, f again, who might live in rural areas where SMS signal isn't great, um, but they might have access to a broadband connection. And again, it kind of increases that accessibility um, for them. Um, so yeah, just to, to say that there's, there's lots of things that we could be doing, um, and actually it'd be great if some of the platforms that are headquartered here could support us more to actually corporate reach- Corporate social responsibility. 100%, thank you. <laughs> great, thank you very much. Thank you all for okay. your contribution.